This is metal guitar stand for like the music. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine there because I think I'm doing the book. I don't need, I think more to do them. Yeah, you can just put it in here. I think my other one is here.
So I'll kind of show you after. If you want to practice, you're more than welcome to. So just seeing who is here, I'm just going to turn this down a bit. Seeing who is here, seeing who is here. Just sorry, I'm just doing the levels. I think I'm good. It might be a little loud. Seeing who's here. Oh. Seeing who's here, seeing who's here. Hi, hey, 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 hey. Looks like we're up and running. We're gonna get started in about 11 minutes, you guys. Is anyone on video? Just so I can know if uh, the sound is working or not. <clears throat> Sound is working from Bay. Perfect, thanks Bay. And is it good levels, like you can hear me good? Yeah, very clear, perfect. Can you also hear the music that's playing? No. So I think the music that's playing for me might not show up because this is a directional mic. Um, and I don't know if there's a way to um, get that in. So if you guys want to throw in some music, you're more than welcome to practice to it. <clears throat> you can throw in some heavy metal, some disco, Kylie Minogue, children's music if your kids are there. <laughs> so obviously, you guys, I'm not going to be able to hear you. I'm seeing that uh, some of you guys are able to text in. Um, She's teaching later, so she's just come to learn the system and stuff. So she says, hi, everyone, if you didn't hear her. And we might see like a text or something pop up. So people are able to, yeah. Hi, Sam. So that's Sarah. Well, it's nice that you guys are all joining us. Um, this is our first online class. And everyone can see the mat OK? I think so. I can see it, yeah. Perfect. Um, so I'm raising my right hand. Do you guys see that as my, like, is it better for me to, yeah, it's clear. Um, I'm just wondering if I should, I'm gonna be practicing kind of at a diagonal. I'm just gonna practice with my same, I'm gonna call out my same arm and leg as I speak it. Um, if that's confusing for you, you can reverse. But essentially, I'll be just guiding you through the postures and stuff. But we still got about 10 minutes, so you can come to a seated meditation or a reclining position. I'm just going to go check and see if there's anyone new that has signed up. Um, I'll be back in a few minutes, you guys.
Um, so again, just for those who are joining in, looks like there's 11 of you so far. Um, this is our first of these classes. I've got the sound hopefully at a level that's good. Um, some of the people who were in before said that they couldn't hear the music that I'm playing. So if you want to put some music on, if you like practice music, I would encourage you to stick some on. Um, Sam is Lexi just joined the meeting. Hi, Lexi. Nice to see you. Um, Sam is going to be practicing on off to the side to see us both in the mirror. Um, she's just here to learn because she's teaching the 4 p.m. So I'm going to be showing her how, how to do everything. Um, I am recording this class. Um, I will try and get it up on our YouTube page at some point um, today or tomorrow. Um, and then we have our YouTube subscription. If you haven't subscribed to YouTube, um, it is Jason Morris Yoga. Um, so search me out and then you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and all of our past classes will be in there. Um, right now, all the schedule is as is, um, but depending on how this works out, um, there might be call for less classes or more classes. Um, some of us will be doing it in studio. Some people will be doing it from home. Um, you know, Jen is just coming back from Mexico and so she's gonna be on quarantine for two weeks. And so she won't have the system. So some of the qualities of this might be different. I'm also thinking about doing some yoga nidra classes, um, maybe in the evening. So we'll get some of the teachers maybe just to dial in. Um, we'll kind of play it by ear. Um, but thank you guys for supporting this. You know, that's scary. A lot of you guys are like, oh, God, I, what am I going to do? I'm not going to have my yoga. But um, we're here. And uh, we're going to try and get this going here in about five more minutes. So again, sign off and just see if anyone else has signed in. So chill out. So we got about two minutes, you guys. We'll be starting in just a couple seconds. Four hundred something. Watch the video. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, we did a Facebook Live um, class yesterday. We did for free just just to kind of say hey, and we had over 400 people um, watch the video, so that's pretty cool. Um, I know some of you guys are probably pretty stressed with everything that's going on. Um, I will, at the end of this, kind of just let you guys maybe ask some questions through the text. Obviously, I can't hear you guys because we're working with a sound system that doesn't have a a play out so it's just um sound in and um you guys can maybe ask a few questions if you're unsure how to use your passes um 
Maybe a couple other things is that we do have our sale going on today. So we're doing 20% off all of our regular passes. Um, so it's a great way to kind of continue supporting the, the studio and the staff um, if you have the ability to. Um, we also have some cyber passes. So we're doing drop-ins on cyber uh, for 10 bucks. Um, and then we're doing one week um, unlimited passes for 30 and the one month's for 100. Um, so let me know if you have questions about that and then you can also sign in uh, to your accounts and buy them online. So this is our only free day after today. The classes will be from passes. And what else do I need to say? Looks like most of you guys found in, found, found it, got in easily. Um, Lex, oh. And we're doing it. One more minute. Sit back and enjoy, you guys. All right, you guys, we're going to get started. So I'm just going to get you to find a comfortable position. And we're just going to begin our practice with some deep breathing. So I just want you to check in as you lay back with your physical body, how it's feeling here on this Tuesday afternoon. Is there anything going on physically in your tissues that is going to be problematic for you today. Just want you to be really aware of that. So just noticing any old injuries or stress that you feel in your tissues. But I most importantly want you to feel the stress. Like, so how is your stress levels today? I know everyone's probably dialed in at a nine or 10. <laughs> to alleviate some of this stress from our sympathetic nervous system, I just want you to start to deepen your inhales and exhales through the nose for me. So finding really expansive breath, even placing your palms on your belly to feel the rise and the fall of the hands so that you know you're breathing into the diaphragm. The diaphragm then stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system by massaging the vagus nerve, increasing vagal tone. If we keep practicing this deep belly breath, this allows us to tap into the parasympathetic nervous system with a bit more ease when we need it. The breath is still moving nice, deep inhales. If you want to awaken the somatosensory part of the brain, the mammalian or feeling part of the brain, don't be afraid to constrict your throat, throat and do your jai breath. Finding that little rumble ocean sound at the back of the throat so we feel, hear, and sense our breath a bit more. And I just want you to solely focus on the breath for a few moments. You're not thinking about your kids. You're not thinking about friends and family, you're not thinking about anything that's happening outside of yourself in this little bubble that you're on, this two by six foot little mat that you're on. <clears throat> this is your time. This is time to regroup, to re-energize, and just to prepare yourself for the coming events. As you're breathing, also do a little bit quick check in with your emotional and mental state. Obviously the monkeys are probably throwing tons of dishes in your head. So just quiet that down by focusing again on the breath, your emotional state. Can we even ourselves out a little bit so that then we can notice fluctuations up and down that roller coaster that sometimes the, the yoga practice can be. And then setting any quick intentions to bring some purpose to your practice. 
So some goals that you've set, giving yourself permission to feel and experience. What does it look like on this Tuesday afternoon? How can we finish this practice and feel ready to take on our day again? And once that intention is set, just bring your dominant hand to your heart chakra and our other hand resting into the belly. So I've been saying in a lot of the classes, I want you to live from this space as much as you can, connect it to heart center, connect it to that intuitive gut brain as well as our power center. And from this space of connection, we're gonna do a breath in, a breath out, a breath in to OM. So nice big inhale through the nose. Sigh it gently out of the mouth. Inhale for one ohm. Oh. Just let that resonate for a moment. And if you're in Shavasana, just float your arms overhead, interlace your hands, press your palms away from you, flex and point the feet a few times. If you're seated, you can do some side bends. Just trying to awaken our body, just like a dog or a cat awakening from its nap, just resetting ourselves. And once you've done that, bring your knees into the chest, give them a nice big squeeze, maybe wrap around the shins, almost wind removing style. You can roll a little bit from side to side or roll up and down the spine a few times. If you're in reclining, just roll over to your right hand side, cradle the head if needed, and then take the next couple of breaths to slowly press yourself up into tabletop. So we are gonna be doing our accessible flow, so all levels, starting with some cat-cow with hands on her shoulders and knees underneath hips. I just want you on your first inhale breath to drop your belly towards the earth and look up to the sky for me. And then as you exhale, just tuck your chin and tailbone under round in the like angry cat, look into your navel. Big breath in, drop the belly, sit bones wide, heart open, look up. And exhale. Let's roll in. Big, loud, rumbly breath, cow pose. Big, slow exhale into cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Ooh, I'm getting a nice dizzy sensation from my cow pose. I'm gonna get you guys to flow out. So you're just gonna add your own variations. If you wanna do some side bends, you can add that. If you want to put your heart onto a Ferris wheel and move it around in circles both ways, or you can roll around on a little merry-go-round and just stretch out those wrists a little bit. I just want you to feel your spine move in all directions for me. And just continually breathing long, deep breaths into the belly. When you're ready, you guys, I'm gonna get you to open the knees, take your hips to your heels and just relax your forehead down to the mat. So just finding a child's pose for a few moments. If you're doing that, I'm just gonna make sure that some of these standing postures are accessible and visible. So as you're holding your child's pose, don't be afraid to rock your head from side to side, massaging out some of the tension you might be carrying in your brow. And then if you like, you can also take a side bend, walking your hands and forehead over to the right edge of your mat. Taking a few breaths there, nice and long. There we go, I'll be visible now. Taking yourself to the other side of your mat, again, nice and long. The long side of your body, don't be afraid to lower that shoulder towards the earth. This will allow you a little deeper stretch through the side channels. And then we'll bring it back to center, hands back onto your mat. And just taking two or three really exaggerated breaths into your per, uh, perineum space or the pelvic floor. 
So that soft space between the sit bones, just feel that bloom ever so slightly as you take an inhale breath. And as you exhale, just feel yourself soften a little bit deeper into the posture. Let's do that for one more really big, slow breath. And release. Gonna get you guys, bring yourself back in the tabletop. So coming back onto all fours. Oh, nice, we can see Sam in the background. Hi, tuck those toes under. Press into the hands and feet and let's lift up into our first downward facing dog. So we carry a lot of stress in our shoulders. So just go into your down dogs very slowly so you can check in with those shoulders. Remember, don't put too much stress into this practice. I want this to be more restorative than, you know, you're forcing yourself to do something that your body's maybe not up to today. Also remember that these wrists were not meant to bear weight. We evolved from that a long time ago. So make sure the palms are nice and flat. Push into that first knuckle of your index finger just to feel some of the weight come out of the wrist. To engage our shoulders a little bit more, turn your biceps towards the front edge of your mat, feeling that wrapping sensation of the armpits like an angry cobra. Pull your belly into the spine. Feel your sit bones lift to the sky as you find an internal spiral in the legs. Think of the inner thighs just ever so slightly trying to look to the back of the mat. And at any time, if you need to put your knees down, if this becomes too much struggle, please do so. Remember, listen to your body. I'm here to guide you, but you're the captain of this ship. You are in control of this practice. From here, let's bring ourselves to a forward fold at the front of the mat. So just stepping our feet to meet our wrists, taking a generous bend into those knees. Let your belly rest in your thighs, hands and elbow creases, and just let your head dangle. Don't be afraid to shake it yes and no a few times. Feel that release in the neck. Maybe gently swaying a little bit from side to side. <clears throat> Just letting you guys know I am dealing with a hamstring injury, so I will be modifying certain postures. Um, so if you see me kind of not too deep within a certain pose, you just know why. Now, if you're holding those arms, just let them relax back to the floor. Bend your knees a little bit deeper. Hands can come to your knees or your thighs to help yourself up and start to roll all the way up to standing. Let's float those arms all the way overhead. Interlace your hands as you press your palms to the ceiling. And I just want you to tick tock right and left a few times. So just moving into a side bend, each side. You can even work this with breath. The inhales will be to lift. The exhales will be to side bend. Do that one more time each side. And then we're just gonna add a quick little flow. So one more time to the opposite side and we'll come back up to center. Let's bring the hands into heart center. On the inhale breath, I want you to take the arms up, bring the palms to touch. And as you exhale, open towards the right side of the room, arms into T formation. Then take the arms back up with the breath in and then exhale, twist to your left side of the room, opening up. Inhale, twist, really using our core to twist, you guys, exhale to open. Inhale, twist or lift. Exhale, twist left. Now we're gonna add that Surya Namaskar A. So inhale, lift. Forward fold as we exhale. We're gonna hinge down to the shins of the earth. I want you to relift halfway, looking towards your front edge of the mat. Plant the hands, step back in a high plank. Modify this first one by dropping your knees and descend down. Roll into your back bend. So we're coming into cobra or up dog. You can keep it low cobra if that's too much for your back and then press back to down dog. Remember, you can always modify that transition as well by moving through tabletop to down dog. Just checking in. It looks like I was getting a phone call, so thank God that didn't go through. <laughs> so we're still good. As you're holding your down dog, I just want you to alternate your heels a couple times just to check in with the back of the legs. Just a couple more breaths. And last, inhale and exhale. On your next inhale, let's look to the front. And as you exhale, step or jump your feet to join those wrists. Take your half lift once you're there. Lengthen. Fold in as you breathe out. Rise up to standing. Big reach. Hands back in the heart center. Exhale. So as we inhale, let's pull our right knee into the chest. Give it a little squeeze just to help open that hip. And then I want you to extend your left arm forward and your right arm back and just twist. 
You can flex or point the foot, but I want you to get that bottom part of your right leg nice and strong. Remember, we're twisting from our core. So keep your hips nice and square to the front. We're gonna come back to a standing position with arms reaching on an inhale breath. So let's take it up, breath in, feet on the floor. Exhale, forward fold, down we go. Take your half lift with an inhale, look forward. Plant the hands, step or jump back, modify or keep those knees lifted, shoulders forward of the wrists as you descend down through Chaturanga. Roll into your back bend of choosing. And as you exhale, slowly, mindfully pressing it back to down dog. Taking that right leg to the sky, I just want you to move that leg in some slow circles. There is no race here, there's not any fast movements, it is simply slow to get that hip joint moving as well as lubricate that joint. Switch directions. And then we're moving into our next twist, you guys. So take that right foot and land it to your right wrist. Left hand stays down, right arm to the sky, twisting sun. You can do a flat hand, a tented hand, or if you feel like you need that core work, you can even float your bottom hand for a few moments. Pull your right sit bone in and back. Squeeze your buttocks, lock in, push into your hands and feet so you create lift, and then try and create the twist in the heart space. Take a nice big breath in. As we exhale, touch your right hand to the floor. Step to the front of the mat. Long spine, and then gentle fold. Exhale out. Rise up to standing. Big reach. Bring the hands into heart, and let's bring that left knee in. Give it a quick squeeze to help open that hip. And then let's twist. So right arm forward, left arm towards the back of the room, and twist your heart towards the left edge of your mat. Stay focused. Keep your eyes on one point to help with balance. Strong left foot, flex your point, but make that lower leg nice and, nice and engaged. On our next inhale, we come back to mountain with arms reaching. So feet to the floor, arms to the sky, take an inhale. Exhale, forward fold, down you go. Take your half leg, lengthen. Plant the hands, step or jump back, and let's descend down through Chaturanga. Back bend, roll through, and down dog, press back. Left leg's gonna rise, and again, you're gonna move that leg in some circles to explore that hip. So both directions. And when you're ready, let's take that left foot, land it into lunge. Right hand stays down. Left arm to the sky, twist. So again, flat or tented, pulling our left sit bone towards the back and in towards the center of the mat. Hugging that left knee in, staying grounded through the inner edge of the foot. Squeeze your heels towards each other so you feel like an open pair of scissors trying to close. Press into your hands and feet so you create lift. So again, we're gonna put our hand onto the mat, you guys. Exhale it down. Inhale to step forward. Exhale to fold. Rise up to standing. Big reach. Bring the hands in the heart. Bring that right knee into the chest again. Give it that squeeze. Now we're moving into Vrikshas in a tree pose. So open the leg out to the side. You can find anywhere along your inseam, but avoid the knee. So above a below or toes on the floor. Once the leg is in the inseam and you're pressing the inseam, bring your hands in the heart. Remember eyes focused, but more importantly, keep your thoughts focused. When we have distracted thoughts within a balanced posture, we wobble and fall out. But if you do fall out, don't be hard on yourself. Arms up, extended tree. We're keeping the collarbones pointed towards the wrists, but we're allowing the shoulder plates just to depress down the back slightly just so we're not putting too much pressure into the brachial plexus and the vessels running through the shoulders. Let's bring the hands back in the heart. Take an inhale for a yogi kick, knee forward, extend that heel, and then exhale, release that right foot back to the mat. Let's take the arms up, big breath in. Forward fold, breath out. Take your half lift, inhale. Shadow Renga, remember you can lose the vinyasas at any time. If you want to just press back to down dog, you can. Otherwise, exhale down through Shadow Renga. Roll into your back bend, inhale, and head back to your D dog. Exhale, we're going to lift that right leg, 
And we're just going to move into peeing dogs. So you're just going to kick your heel to your bum and stack that knee over top of the hip. Some of you might stay here. If you would like a little more challenge, plant into your left hand, push the floor away from you, tend to your right hand, and just twist a little bit more towards that right side of the room. We're coming back into runner's lunge. So plant the hands, square off the hips. Take a breath in, and then exhale to land that right foot forward. <sighs> Drop that left knee down. If you need extra cushion, grab your left edge. Give yourself an extra layer. Up we come up onto that knee. You can always go onto blocks beside you or hands onto the knee. And then those of you have a little bit more room to go with a sternum lifting to create space in our lower back, you can reach those shoulders back. If you would like to work the core and the hips, you can take the arms up and take the weight out of the hands. I'm just settling in here for a few moments. One more inhale and exhale. We'll take a breath in. Exhale, the hands will come to the mat. Let's lift that back knee and let's step to the front. Inhale. And then exhale, gentle fold. Rise up to standing. Big reach. Palms will touch overhead. As we exhale, hands in the heart. Shift onto that right foot. Pull your left knee in. Give it a squeeze. When you're ready for your tree pose, open the leg and find your inseam. Again, please avoid the knee. Hands to heart. Notice if your right hip relaxes, your left hip wants to drop back. So keep that right hip engaged, squeeze the buttocks, press the midline, and then reach the arms up into the sky and find your tree. Again, collarbones point towards the wrist, but allow the shoulder blades just to depress down the backs ever so slightly. Beautiful, bring the hands back in the heart. We'll do our little yogi kick with an inhale. And exhale, release that foot down. Let's reach those arms up. Breath in. Swan dive down. Breath out. We'll take that inhale for vinyasa or to down dog. So when you exhale, step or jump back. Press to D dog or descend. Back bend. Inhale. And down dog. Press back. The left leg's going to rise. We're going to kick that bum and turn our pelvis for peeing dog. Both hands flat or extra challenge by planting to your right palm, pushing the floor away from you and twisting just a little bit more to the left side. Remember, there's always options to make it stronger or softer. Please listen to your body. On our next inhale, plant and kick that leg high and then land it gently to lunge. Moving into low lunge, drop the knee, extra mat if you need to. If you come, hands to knee. Remember, it's not about the depth. We're not dumping into the posture. Keep some lift. Tuck the tailbone. Squeeze your heels towards each other. Add a little bit of back bend if you like. It's very easy for us to go to our max uh, flexibility within this posture, you guys. I really want you to work against that. Right? We don't want to destabilize the pelvis by going too deep and overstretching those muscles and ligaments. If you want, the arms can rise. You can reach back. Keep expanding through the lumbar spine which is your lower spine. Take a nice big inhale. And exhale, let's put our hands onto the floor. We're gonna lift back into runner's lunge. We'll step to the front of the mat, take an inhale breath, and then fold in, breathe out. Again, we're gonna rise up to standing. We're gonna do one more sequence in this opening little bit, you guys. So hands to heart, exhale out. Let's find chair pose, ukatasan. Drop in, arms next to those ears or hands to heart if you want to lose the shoulders. You can always take V-shape or cactus arms. You can bind behind your lower back and stretch the shoulders, challenge the rhomboids. You decide. Just find some stillness, noticing the sensation. It shouldn't be too much. Also, we shouldn't be in it too soft. That place between too much and not enough where all the magic happens. Going a little bit deeper. Inhale to rise up. Exhale, let's take Surya Namaskar B, forward fold. Half lift, breath in. Chaturanga, step or jump back, descend. Roll into that back bend and head back to your down dog. The right leg's gonna lift just for an inhale. And then exhale, land into runner's lunge, right foot to wrist, widen your stance, high lunge or warrior one. You can decide back heel up or down. Come on up. 
Again, if this is too much for your shoulders, bring your hands in the heart. If you want to make this a little bit more crescent, you can take a back bend, just like we did in our low anjanyasana, the low lunge. Keep pressing into that back heel. Don't let the heel melt to the floor. If you've got the heel lifted, lift it up so you feel those hip flexors on the left side fire up a bit more. If you're back bending, come back to a neutral spine with an inhale. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back to high plank for me and descend. Roll into that back bend and head back to your down dog. Left leg up, breath in. Land it forward into lunge, breath out. Rise up, high lunge. So again, the back heel can be down traditional warrior one style or back heel lifted. All depends on what you need. Just squaring our shoulders and our hips to the front of the mat as much as we can. Obviously in traditional, it's a little bit harder. We don't want to twist the knee too much. So you decide. Find the depth where your brain doesn't start to freak out because the sensation's too strong. And then at the end here, let's just go towards our edge just a little bit more. So just descend. Just challenge your perception of the posture with that. And then exhale, hands to the floor. This time we're just stepping to the front of the mat. Half lift once you get there. Fold in as you breathe out. Rise up to standing, big reach. And hands in the heart. Float the hands beside your hips, palms forward, shoulders back. Close your eyes and find your mountain pose. Just want you to take a few deep breaths here, observing the body and how it's reacting to the posture. Observing where your emotions and your thoughts are at as well as we begin to move through our tissues. One more breath. Just use that exhale to release your warm up. Good, have a quick sip of water, you guys. And we'll get into our next sequence. So hopefully your bodies are loving moving. I know after yesterday's class, I had a million people text me like, thank God you're doing this. And I was a little freaked out, like, oh my God, what are we gonna do for a couple of weeks as we're in isolation? But I'm glad that we were able to stay connected, even if it's just me talking to you and I can't see you. So we're gonna get into our next sequence, you guys. Take your time, come out at any time you know. I like to string postures together and make it challenging, but it's completely up to you. But let's take those arms up, take a breath in. Forward fold, exhale down. Half lift, shadow ring, a step or jump back, descend. Back bend, inhale. And down dog, exhale. Right leg rises, breath in. Land it forward to lunge, breath out. We're coming up to twisting lunge, high lunge first. Arms up, inhale. Hands to heart, exhale. Inhale, left elbow, right knee. Press into the knee and just lift your heart up to meet your thumbs, settling in. If anyone needs to drop that left knee down and just make it a bit more accessible, please do so. If you have advanced variations, if you wanna do your twisting kundyasana, you would like to balance on your right foot, you can play around with this. You can do a few step forwards and backs into twisting chair, back into twisting lunge. Let's stay here for about three more deep breaths. Last inhale and exhale. Preparing ourselves for warrior two. Drop that left heel down. Extend your left arm forward, up and over like a big rainbow and settle into Virabhadrasana B. So the right arm forward, left arm back, front knee and ankle stack, pressing into the outside edge of your left foot to get that inner ankle nice and light. You shouldn't feel your knee falling in. We should always be pushing the foot away from us. Squeeze the shoulder blades. So if you had a mirror in front of you, you wouldn't be able to see your back arm. A gentle tuck of the tailbone, being really careful that we don't feel a bulging out of the inner right hip, that we are actually feeling it hug in, that healthy compression of the joint. All right, holding here for a few more breaths. In a moment, we're gonna be taking Exalted Warrior with our bind. We're gonna do half bind first to see how our shoulders feel. So take your right hand up to your shoulder blade, grab onto that elbow and just guide it behind the head. This might be enough for some of you. Some of you guys will internally rotate behind the back, moving into your cow face bind. You can always use a strap between the hands. Now just a little gentle back bend. Lift your elbow and your right pectoral up to the sky 
and just reach back slightly, keeping your head in line with the spine. Try not to let it drop into the left. Push it into that right bicep. You want some extra challenge, just close your eyes. Beautiful. We're going to find our warrior two again. So inhale, unfurl the arms. Let's straighten out that right leg. Shorten your stance if you need to. This is where I need a block for my hamstring, but we're going to move into triangle, you guys. So on your next inhale, reach out over that right foot as you tilt your pelvis towards the front edge of your mat. Take your hand down, twist shin to a block or to the earth. Press into the floor with the hand and feet and extend that left arm up to the sky. Keep your belly in. Try not to back bend too much in this posture. So bottom ribs squeeze in, engaging transverse abdominals. So you feel that tightening action of the core. And just find that breath. This is a very accessible posture, something we do in almost all of my classes. So I want you not to think about the physicality of the posture. I want you to think, what are you doing within the pose? The pose is not the goal. It's what we do in it. Understanding our habits, our mental processes, our emotional responses to sensation. These are the things I want you to notice, observe and learn from. In the next breath in, we're gonna come back to warrior two. So a nice slow rise. From this position, let's bring ourselves into a bind behind the back, clasping the hands. We're gonna turn our heart towards the front left corner of the mat. We're gonna do this bound variation of exalted warrior. Slide those knuckles down the back of that left hamstring as we lift our heart to the sky, squeezing those shoulder blades tight. So you decide how much side bend or back bend you need. Remember, these are shapes we don't create enough in our daily lives. So this is something that we should always be thinking about doing with our spine. On your next inhale though, come back up to standing. And then let's take that right shoulder down to the right knee. Some of you guys might go on it if you need support or go inside of it so we challenge the core. Don't let your bum pop out to the right. Pull your right sit bone in and then you can bow your head below the heart and just turn this into an inversion for a few moments. So we did this in our Facebook Live class yesterday. I love me some humble warrior, but it is very challenging. So hands onto the floor if you need to. On your next inhale though, can you press up slowly with as much control as you went down and find your warrior two? The simplest of transi transitions, well, that was a fun word to say, transitions, transitions, we're gonna go back to high lunge. So engage your core, squeeze your buttocks, lift your back heel and turn your heart to the front edge of the mat. From this position, position let's take our hands down to the mat. Let's step to the front with an inhale breath. And let's fold in as we breathe out. Rise up to standing, big reach. Take your right arm under the left and twist tie those arms together, finding eagle. Now, if this is impossible for your shoulders, you can give yourself a bear hug. Drop down into chair. Shift the weight into your left foot. If you have any knee issues on that right side, take figure four, it keeps it a little bit softer. You can stack the knees, squeeze your inner thighs, possibly tuck the foot if it goes, but don't force it. And then you decide the depth. If you lift your elbows, a little bit more rotator. If you take the elbows towards knee, you're gonna feel a little bit more into the hips. You decide where you need it. Let's hold it for two more breaths. Getting ready for that vinyasa, you guys. Take the feet to the floor, reach those arms up. And let's swan dive down. Take your half lift, inhale. Chaturanga or down dog. Take your back bend of cobra, up dog, inhale. And press back to down dog, exhale. Left leg to the sky, breathe in. Land that foot forward next to your wrist, breathe out. Widen your stance if you need to. Come on up, reach those arms up, breath in. And then let's take our twist, exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, right elbow to left knee. Exhale, push into that elbow and lift your heart to meet your thumbs. So again, squeeze your buttocks, squeeze your heels towards each other. Press into the floor with the feet, press into the elbow, create lift and buoyancy within the torso. Balancing, arm balance, we're here for about two or three more breaths, you guys. 
So remember that next transition is gonna have you facing the opposite edge, the right edge of your mat. We're gonna be moving to warrior two. So start slowly by dropping that right heel, turn the foot out, right arm up and over as we rainbow into our Virabhadrasana B, settling into that lunge. So again, accessible posture. You decide the depth of that left leg, but just find some sensation. Let it challenge your habits and just settle in for a few moments. Again, you can close those eyes if you like. Just playing around. From this position, we're gonna take our bound cow face arm variation of exalted. So take your left hand up and over, touch your shoulder blades, maybe guide the elbow a little bit more behind the head and you can stay there. Or you can internally rotate that right arm behind the back, sliding those hands towards each other for a bind or not. Lift your left shoulder, lift your elbow, lift your left pectoral and just press back. So again, feel that beautiful sensation, especially through the left side, we're giving space to the stomach, the right side was the liver, allowing some freedom within the torso, giving a little bit of space, stretching out those layers of the abdominal wall. So we're gonna find our warrior two, Inhale to unfurl the arms. Straighten out that left leg. Reach out over your, to the front, over that left leg. Take your hand down to the shin to a block or to the earth. And take your right arm up. So don't let yourself just hang out. Don't let the belly open. Let's use that core. Squeeze your ribs and your hips towards each other. Shorten the core slightly and then tighten the corset. We're looking up. We're here. Resisting the stickiness of our mat. I've got a brand new mat on the floor, so it feels really nice. I don't have to work that hard, but you should be trying to squeeze your heels towards each other. So you're constantly working, All right? A couple more breaths. Now with as much control as you went down, come back to warrior two. So it's an inhale to lift. Now when we bind behind our back, switch your grip. We have that dominant way of doing things. A certain part of the brain wants to do it a certain way. So switch that opposite thumb leading. Now turn your heart towards the front right corner of your mat and taking our second set of humble, slide those knuckles down the back of the right hamstring as we just squeeze the shoulder blades and lift the heart. So just lots of space again for the belly, giving some work for what's usually the weaker side of our body, the back side of our body. Beautiful. We're going to maintain the bind. Inhale to lift and then humble warrior. You can go on your thigh or go inside depending on the work that you want to do. So again, try not to let your butt drop out towards the left side of the mat. Pull it into center. Hug the knee and shoulder against each other. Dip your head below the heart. Thumbs can rest against your backside if this is too much for your shoulders. Or you can just release your hands to the floor and take some body weight. On your next inhale, rise back up to warrior two. With control, we come up. And then from this position, we turn it back into high lunge. So this is a funky little transition. Press into the back foot, turn yourself forward. Beautiful. Let's take our hands to the floor. We're gonna take that vinyasa, you guys. So down we go, step it back. You can always press to D-dog, otherwise descend. Back bend, roll through and down dog, press back. We're gonna check in for a moment before we get into our next side with our uh, eagle pose. Couldn't remember which bird I was talking about. For those who have never practiced with me online here, I am known to kind of forget where I am, what I'm doing. So just kind of expect it. I laugh it off, don't worry about it. Let's take a breath, look to those wrists and let's step ourselves forward. Let's fold in, rise up. And let's take that left arm under right. Let's twist tight together. Again, bear hug if this is too much challenge for your shoulders. Drop into your chair, shift back onto that right foot, left ankle into figure four or full eagle stack, possibly wrapping the foot and finding your full Garudasan. Obviously, if anyone is wanting to play, work some strength, work some arm balances, if you know them, Ekapada Galavasana, things like that, you're more than welcome to drop in. Otherwise, just find some stillness. Two more breaths. 
And on that next breath, let's take those feet to the floor. Reach the arms up. And we're going to forward fold. We're going to take a little break in yogi squat. So once you touch down, turn your heels out, drop your hips to your heels. If you have a block or a pillow and you want to put it underneath your bum just to take some of the pressure away from the joints, you can. Bring your hands in the heart center, sit up nice and tall. And just close your eyes. At first, let's just find this sense of gratitude. We are all extremely privileged to be able to move on the mat today. So just focusing on the good stuff that happened in that first bit of our practice. I always love to come to the idea of gratitude. It just really helps to pull my heart back into the right space. Now we're about halfway through the posture. If anyone needs to forward fold, you can. If anyone would like to take crow, bakasana, you can put your hands onto the floor, bend your elbows, put your knees onto the back of the arms, and then float your heels. I'm just going to stay here today. But it's optional. Everything's an option. My forward fold peeps, you're going to stay there. We're going to join you. So crows, come back to the floor. Let's all take our hands to the mat. Lift your hips up. Releasing those tourniquets in the legs, you'll feel that warmth start to flush through your legs. Take your half lift. Inhale. Fold in as you breathe out. And let's rise up one more time. Big breath in. So if you're close to a wall or anything, just step back into the middle of your mat. We're just going to move into tree, or sorry, tree, dancer's pose, you guys. So some uh, posture you get in almost all of my classes. So we're going to do right heel to bum, right hand to foot. Knees will squeeze together. And then we're going to take that left arm to the sky. When you're ready, kick your foot into the hand. And again, I'm not moving deep into this posture, just protecting my injury. You guys decide the depth. Make it more about the back bend than about the split. And one more breath into kick. And gentle release. Another side. Left heel to bum. Left hand to foot, knees together, right arm to the sky. Ground into the sole of that foot. Kick in. Whoop. And find your dancer pose. I always, in all my balance postures, I always do thumb and index finger together into Gaian Mudra, that grounding mudra. It's just something that I always do. But I just want you to stay grounded. Don't let balanced postures take you up into the stratosphere. Stay on the earth. Stay in your body. Let's take one more breath in to kick into our max. And then slow release, you guys. Beautiful. Take those arms up. Inhale. We're going to be taking a break in child's pose here in a second. Exhale down. Take your half lift, breath in. And if you want a vinyasa, you can, or just step back to down dog. Press out your heels a couple times just to flush those legs. And then when you're ready, everyone drop your knees down, hips to your heels, forehead to the mat, and relax. So the strong part of our practice is done. We're just going to be doing a little bit of work with the option for inversions for those who would like to on uh, the forearms, possibly moving into headstand. So with my new friends or those who are not comfortable going upside down, you'll be doing dolphin pose. And then my friends who are comfortable with headstand from your dolphin, you'll bring your hands into an interlace position, walk your head into the hands with the top of the head on the mat, and then you will resist kicking up. You can always move to your wall, but I want you to float into your inversion. Remember my friends who stay in dolphin, you're gonna get the same benefit. So starting with dolphin, just so we can all energetically from wherever we are, I actually have someone practicing from BC, so it's so cool to have you, Lisette, but we're gonna tuck those toes under. Do you remember Lisette? Yeah, Sam's like, Sam says, hi, Lisette. We're gonna tuck, uh, tuck our toes and lift our tailbone and find dolphin. I'm just gonna drop out and just let you guys explore for a few moments. We're gonna be here for a little bit, so if you need to touch your knees down at any time, please do so. Remember, the armpits are wrapping towards your toes, so you should feel, as Jen uh, would say, the armpits of power, almost feel like you have half avocados. 
They should never be dumping in. You shouldn't be sitting in the shoulders. You should always be pushing the floor away. If you like, you can join Sam with some leg extensions. Headstand peeps, remember you're walking your head to your hands and you're lifting slowly into your headstand. For those of you who are staying dolphin, if you would like to take a break, you're about halfway through, drop your knees down to the floor and just take a few moments to uh, breathe and recover and just let those shoulders kind of relax a bit. As we can see right in front of her, yeah. We have Sam doing our lovely headstand. Such lovely alignment. Look at those strong feet. Sam's probably like, oh my God, please stop talking about my headstand. Try not to make her laugh. Oh, she's going into straddle. Oh, she's giggling. She's coming into Baddha Konasan. Look at all those beautiful movements into that knee bent position. Oh, tiny little bit of hollow back coolio. And she's gonna come back to the air. So people in headstand come back. And let's find our way to down dog. I'm gonna get you into a soft pose. We're into the last quarter of class. So I love me some pigeon. So let's get into a little bit of softness with pigeon. So from your down dog, take that right leg to the sky for me. Inhale up. And then slowly bring that right shin forward. Drop into your pigeon. Now remember, I'm a believer of blocks in pigeon. So don't be afraid to grab a block, place it underneath your right hip. If you don't have a prop, you can always put a pillow. If you have the flexibility, maybe you work against that flexibility a little bit and keep some uh, energy in the pelvis, like you're squeezing your knees towards each other. If you want to do a back bend or a bind just to help open the front body, remember our front body tends to be tight and our back body overstretched with how much we sit. So it's nice to reverse some of the effects of our daily routine on that. And then when you guys are ready for sleeping pigeon, you're going to take your forehead down to the floor. And you can head down there at any time. If this is problematic for anyone's back, knee, or anything, you can always slide your left knee to meet your right foot and come into deer pose. And then you can lay on your left, uh, right thigh, make this a little bit more accessible. You can also come into double fire log, stacking the shins. Or you can recline back into thread the needle pose where you can reach up. All of these postures are going to give you the same benefit of that external rotation, work in the hips. So you just decide. Making sure that we come back to our breath. And just starting to settle your nervous system again. Sometimes the active practice can get us a little bit into the uh, sympathetic nervous system, right? We're a little bit active. But what's nice about activity and putting our body through a little bit of stress is it does get the diaphragm moving. So the study I read is one of the best ways to tune your parasympathetic nervous system is to think of doing either with your yoga practice or any of your other workouts doing that kind of a hit style, high intensity, low intensity, high intensity, low intensity. The highs and the lows and getting that diaphragm moving and then coming to softness so we can then notice the softness really helps to tune the parasympathetic nervous system. They say it's one of the best ways to get us into that relaxed state. But it's within the stillness, within the silence that we really start to amplify some of those subtle voices that are residing within. Remember right now, fear probably has a lot of the power. And it's not that we're taking all the power away because that is not part of our human condition, right? We're, we are human beings. We do have the light and the dark. So it's taking some power away from it and giving power to that which we need to focus on. You know, the more positive energies, feeling supported, feeling safe, feeling self-love, having that self-care routine, all of these things to nurture that side. It's kind of like the tale of two wolves, right? That which we feed grows stronger. So you can make the decision of what you're going to feed. But remember, whatever is being presented to you within your body, within your heart, within your mind, is there. It is you. It is part of you. Try not to push it down. Let yourself experience it. Let yourself move through it, hopefully, and come out the other side. So I'm just going to give you about a minute in silence, you guys. And just stay within the posture. Pigeon, 
fire log, thread the needle, close your eyes and just focus on your breath or your intention. And then we're just going to do three deep sighing breaths together, you guys. So take a nice big inhale through the nose, audibly sigh it out. <sighs> Let's do two more like that. Big breath in. <sighs> and then last time, big inhale. <sighs> so we are going to come into Janya Shusasana. So with your right leg in front, all we're going to do is shift onto that right hip. Bring our left leg forward with the right heel in. So those of you in reclining, you can just join us as you're comfortable. But we're just going to fold over that left thigh. So pressing our thigh bone into the floor so the muscles engage the point in the stretch. Resist pulling too much into that passive range. I would like you to keep it active range so it's more about that tilt of the pelvis and feeling that natural stop point. You feel the same sensation and it's a lot safer. Now, no class with me would be complete without a little bit of boat. I know you hate boat as much as I do, but it's important. Get that core strong. So let's come on up. Bring both knees in towards the chest as we rock back onto the bum. Float those shins up. I can't wait to watch this back and see how much I shake in boat. Release those hands. So you can always do straight legs if you want, or you can come down into extended boat. If you're going extended, make sure the belly's in. Make sure your lower back feels supported. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Let's squeeze it in, you guys. Bring it in. Come to cross-legged. Step back to down dog. Or if you feel like you need another vinyasa and you know it, go for it. Otherwise, just take a few moments just to settle in your... D dog. And then when you're ready for your left side of pigeon, you guys, bring that left shin forward, drop it down. Again, I'm a believer of blocks within this posture, right? Some of these postures are quite extreme. We don't want to get it too deep into the hip openers. You don't want to destabilize those joints. So if you want to do a back bend, you have some binds that you play with, do so safely. I know Bay is in class and she loves herself some mermaids, so you're more than welcome to add those. I wish I had um, looked at the class list a little bit more um, intently, you guys. Unfortunately, I've been so busy trying to get everything up and running, um, but it would be nice to kind of say hi to all of you but I do want to, again, say how much I appreciate you guys joining us. I know that this isn't ideal, but I also think it's pretty cool. But it is weird practicing in a room by myself. Well, at least I have Sam today. But it is weird, you know, not having feedback, not having people's energies to kind of help guide me in what I'm presenting. Because I always make my classes up on the spot. So it is strange to have that um, just solo energy but it is cool. <clears throat> and I think um, after this whole Corona thing is um, done, hopefully soon, um, we're gonna continue with these online classes because I do think it's beneficial, you know, especially for friends of ours like Lisette who's moved away um, and would like to practice with us. These are things I think I would like to continue to offer. So it won't be all of our classes, but I do think that we will do some offerings of online. So just giving you one more minute in silence, you guys.
So let's do those three deep sighing breaths. So nice big inhale through the nose. Open your mouth. <sighs> Two more, just like that. Big breath in. <sighs> Last time, big inhale. <sighs> so again, we're gonna go to Janu Shasasana. So settle onto your left hip so you can bring that right leg forward. I won't be doing this one deep. This is my bad hamstring. Those of you in seated, just come back up and we're gonna fold over our right thigh. So remember, keep the muscles hugging the bone, almost like the legs being vacuum packed. It helps to push that right thigh bone into the floor. This will engage the muscles. And then just think of tilting your pelvis to your foot. And one more boat, up onto the bum. Rock back, float those shins. Release the arms. If you wanna keep your feet on the floor and just lean back if this is a little too strenuous, right? We all have our issues within our body. Some of you guys may have just given birth and your core is not quite there, right? Make it accessible for you. Make it work for your body. What's medicine for one can be poison for another. So I just want you to remember that fact and Make these postures work. So change up, explore within the posture until you find your sweet zone. Straight legs, extended boat here for the last 10 seconds if you like. Instead of rolling forward, we're gonna be rolling back you guys here in a couple seconds. So don't be afraid to keep the spine rounded, grab behind your knees and just let yourself roll onto the backs. We're gonna bring our right leg in and extend our left leg onto the floor. So we're gonna move into right side when we're moving. So with interlaced hands over the knee or the elbow crease up and over the knee, we're gonna guide that knee down into the torso. So we feel a little pinch in the hip and we feel the belly get a massage. Obviously the more the knee is over the center line, the more massage we're gonna get, but you're gonna also have to play with the ribs a bit. And if you need a little bit more softness, don't be afraid to let the leg just open out a little bit. Giving that liver and acinine colon a bit of a massage to stimulate blood flow. And then we'll switch legs, you guys. So just let that right leg fall out and onto the mat. You're gonna feel that movement of blood through the limb as we bring our left leg in for interlaced grip or elbow crease up and over and just gently pulling in. As we settle in, again, I wanna thank you guys for coming to this practice today. We are going to be continuing with this from the studio and from some people's homes as they can't get into the studio. But after this class is done, I'll give you a few minutes just to kind of gather yourselves. And then if you wanna ask any questions by kind of typing in, again, I don't have the ability to hear you guys. Maybe I will if I, take the microphone system out, we'll, we'll try it out. But then you can ask some questions and I can answer them for you guys. Um, just with regards to the studio, to the passes, to the online options, all of that. Let that left leg fall to the floor. Let the blood just flow through for a second. Let's bring both knees in for full wind removing, wrap around those shins as much as you can. Again, the knees can go wide and kind of that diver's tuck or knees tight together, massaging the entire belly. And then last pose, happy baby. Reach up and grab those edges of the feet or the toes. If you need to, you can do straps or reach around the back of the knees and just pull those knees in tight. Knees will be wide, sorry. Pull them down in tight towards the floor. 
Giving yourself that stretch, you can rock a little bit from side to side, you can play around within the posture. And then just let your legs fall into Shavasana. And just come into that stillness. So remembering that um, what you are feeling is justified. It is a very human experience, but fear is one of the kleshas or the poisons of the mind. And so it stops us from seeing what is really going on around us, what's going on inside of us. Truly, it's like putting on layers of cheesecloth, every klesha that we kind of are living in. So fear, ignorance, attachment to pleasure, aversion to pain, ego, all of these things stop us from really being present to the truth. And so it's not that you're going to get rid of the fear, but just take some power away from it start to lift up that cheesecloth that is shrouded over you and take a look around. There's a lot of beautiful things happening around us, just what's happening within the yoga community and how we're rallying together to try and keep people sane <laughs> and doing the work. Um, I see beautiful things with you know the relationships I'm able to share with my roommates and people I'm being in touch with who I haven't talked with in a while and reaching out. There is tons of beauty that's going on around you. So focus on that, take some power away from that fear and uncertainty that we're all experiencing. And throughout your day, when you feel yourself starting to move into fear, come back to the sensation, close your eyes, take a couple deep breaths and remember this moment. Pull yourself back into the now, pull yourself back into that feeling self and get out of the head. And I hope that the rest of your day is pleasant, is filled with laughter of your kids and the people that you're sharing this with. And remember that we are always here, either online or reach out through our social medias. Let us know if you need anything. From this space, bringing your dominant hand to your heart and your other hand resting into your belly, tapping back into that heartfelt self and your gut brain. And join me for a final OM to finish our practice. Big breath in through the nose, gentle sigh out of the mouth, breath into an ohm. Oh. And relax your arms by your side. Our practice for today is done. I will see you guys for my next practice, which is tomorrow night. Remember that all the classes right now are on the schedule. So Sam today at 4 p.m. and the rest in the evening. Keep an eye on our social medias for little announcements and maybe extra at classes we add in. And come see us again. From my heart to yours, the highest in me salutes the highest in you. Namaste. Thanks, guys. So whoever said that, you are very, very, very welcome. I hope you had an amazing practice. So I took the microphone out. Can you guys still hear me? Just wondering. Yes, okay, so when I take that microphone out, perfect. So if you guys have any, oh, you're very, very welcome from Lauren. It's so nice to have you guys join. I think that was Lauren Renlin that uh, joined us today. Any questions? Okay. 
Oh, it's so nice to be able to practice with you. To Andrea Wu, it was lovely to have you. It says thanks, I hope everyone had a great day. I'm having an amazing day, actually. I don't know about you guys. I know that being stuck at home is not easy, but um, I don't know, I feel really heartful right now. Lauren says thanks, I want to say big thanks. It looks like it's just a lot of thanks. So if you have any questions, you guys reach out to me. Uh, you can reach me at jason at omahatyoga.ca and remember our YouTube page, Jason Owens Yoga. Remember on social media and uh, the Insta and Facebook at omahatyoga. And yeah, enjoy your evening. That was so great. Thank you. You're very welcome from iPhone to everyone. Um, Sam Stoll in Shavasana. Do you want to wave your hand and say goodbye? All right, guys. Enjoy your day. We'll see you soon.